Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon. Bold and beautiful mystery. Where is the real Sheila Carter and other burning questions? Well, I'll say this for the bold and the beautiful. They know how to get our attention. Only hours before Friday's episode was set to air, supervising producer Casey Kasprzyk hit social media to warn that people should not miss the final 10 seconds. Needless to say, we pretty much all assumed that the week's cliffhanger would feature Shayla popping out of her premature grave in one fashion or another. But let's talk a bit about how we got from here to there, shall we? The saga is finally over, said Lauren to Eric and Donna. I was happy to have Genoa City's fashionista swing by. The fact that the young and restless diva who played such a huge role in the early years of the Shayla story has virtually been persona non grata ever since the she-devil returned on Finn and Steffi's wedding day has been a real burr in my butt. I mean, honestly, a lot of how bold and beautiful has played Sheila this go-round has annoyed the crap out of me. From ruining the shock of her return by promoting it in advance to reducing the GO8 villainess to a waitress, it's been one misstep after another. There were some brilliant moments along the way, to be sure. Sheila shooting Finn and Steffi was a shock, even if more to us than Finn, who maintained and endlessly babbled about his connection to his biological mother against all reason. And having Bill hook up with Sheila in an effort to bring her to justice was a fun idea that ultimately made no sense. The FBI didn't know this was entrapment and went nowhere. I don't think most viewers really believed that Sheila was dead. And honesty, I'd like to think that if and when they finally do off the baddie, it's with the kind of epic, show-spanning, suspect-revealing storyline I've been wanting for years. I mean, look at all the characters it could involve. However, I will say that even as it became obvious that the final seconds would involve Deacon making the toe-related discovery, I kinda got chills as it played out on screen. I can't help wondering if it would have been even more impactful if the show hadn't tipped their hand in advance. Even before Kasprzyk teased social media about Friday's cliffhanger, it seemed kinda obvious to me, and based on the social media response, most of you, where things were headed. I mean, the more often Steffi told Liam that she and Finn were determined to not let anything come between us, certainly not Sheila, the clearer it became that that was exactly what would happen. I do, however, think the way that Sheila will come between them might wind up being a bit unexpected. Clearly, they're positioning Hope to be a spoiler in the Finn slash Steffi romance. Yes, he urged her to consider getting back together with Liam, but that seems about as likely as me not booking a cruise or going to Disney World next year. Finn's suggestion that she give Liam another chance seemed rather odd, especially coming on the heels of the doctor saying she might never be able to fully trust Thomas because of the Beth incident. I get what he meant, but here's the thing. Thomas has shown growth since that time, whereas Liam, who spent years breaking Hope's trust by ping-ponging between her and Steffi, seems to have changed not one iota. Heck, just this past week he spent time comforting both of the ladies, as if he could easily fall back into either one's arms. Sheila was a menace. Lauren reminded Eric and Donna. She was dangerous. You never knew what she was going to do next. Coupled with the awesome flashbacks, it was a reminder of what made Shyla such a fantastic and unpredictable villain, and how watered down the version we've had in recent months was. I can't help hoping that it was also an indication that someone behind the scenes is ready to give us that version back. I also loved that they showed flashbacks to Eric and Shyla's romance, because one of the things that has always been crucial to the character is that Shyla wants nothing more than to be loved. Even in this latest iteration, Sheila was driven by that desire. It is her main motivation. As Kimberlyn Brown joked to me a while back, if people would stop trying to stand between Sheila and the people she loves, bad things would stop happening. Honestly, that's a great story. In the past, we've gotten to see glimpses of a happy Sheila, and we wonder, how long can this last? Where will things go wrong? And in most cases, it's someone trying to derail her dream of finally having what comes so easily to everyone else. Frankly, that's almost relatable. Take away the psychotic episodes, and it's basically the same story as that of all my children's Erica Kane or Days of Our Lives, Stefano. In the words of Andra Linage, the terrifying villain in ABC's 1999 adaptation of Stephen King's Storm of the Century, pictured above, give me what I want, and I'll go away.
Sheila would totally understand him, especially given that his ultimate goal was to steal a child from the town folk. He was terrifying in much the same way that her ascent into the evil lead of evil began by stealing Lauren's baby. By the way, anybody else find it odd that when listing Sheila's various sins against her, Lauren didn't even mention that one. Did Deacon put Sheila's coffin on top of the bar at Il Giardino? That's pretty much the only way what we saw on screen makes sense. And it seemed weird to me that he bought a coffin for Sheila only to then have her cremated. Is that a thing people do? Cleary, I have not spent enough time thinking about estate planning. Asterisk, I love that as Deacon was eulogizing Sheila, Hope couldn't look him in the eye. Heck, she was pulling more faces than an overly passionate, so you think you can dance contestant. If awards were handed out for eye-rolling, Hope would definitely be a front-runner. In the sprawling metropolis of Los Angeles, where dreams and dramas intertwine like the vines of a labyrinthine garden, there exists a mystery that shrouds the city in whispers and speculation. It revolves around a woman named Sheila Carter, a name that echoes through the corridors of power and the alleys of the forgotten alike. Sheila is not your ordinary woman. She is a tempest, a force of nature whose presence leaves an indelible mark on all who encounter her. The tale of Sheila begins like many others in this city of angels, with ambition and desire intertwining in a dance of fate. Once a humble nurse with dreams of a better life, Sheila's path took a dark turn when she crossed paths with the illustrious Forrester family. It was here that her life became entangled in a web of deceit, betrayal, and passion. At first glance, Sheila appeared to be nothing more than a loyal employee, but beneath her demure facade lay a cunning mind and a heart consumed by a thirst for vengeance. Through a series of intricate schemes and manipulations, Sheila wormed her way into the lives of the foresters, leaving chaos and destruction in her wake. But just when it seemed like Sheila's reign of terror had reached its zenith, she vanished without a trace, leaving behind a trail of questions and shattered lives. Where had she gone? What was her ultimate goal? And perhaps most importantly, was she truly gone, or was she merely biding her time, waiting for the perfect moment to strike once again? Rumors swirled like autumn leaves in the wind, each whisper adding a layer of intrigue to the enigma of Sheila Carter. Some claimed she had fled the country, while others swore they had seen her lurking in the shadows of the city, her eyes burning with a fierce determination. But amidst the chaos of speculation, one question burned brighter than all the rest. Where is the real Sheila Carter? For in a city built on illusion and deception, it was impossible to discern truth from fiction, reality from fantasy. Perhaps Sheila had never truly existed at all, merely a figment of collective imagination, a symbol of the darkness that lurked beneath the surface of polite society. But even as the mystery of Sheila Carter consumed the thoughts of those who dared to ponder her fate, other questions bubbled to the surface, demanding answers of their own. What secrets did Sheila hold, and who else was entangled in the web of her deceit? As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, the search for Sheila Carter became an obsession for some, a distant memory for others. But for those who had felt the sting of her betrayal, her absence was a constant reminder of the fragility of trust and the depths of human depravity. And so the mystery of Sheila Carter remained unsolved, a tantalizing puzzle that teased the imagination and haunted the dreams of all who dared to delve into its depths. For in a city as vast and complex as Los Angeles, some secrets were destined to remain hidden, forever tantalizingly out of reach. In the heart of the bustling metropolis of Los Angeles, where the glitz and glamour of Hollywood intersect with the darker alleys of intrigue, a bold and beautiful mystery unfolded. At the center of it all was the enigmatic figure of Sheila Carter, a woman whose presence seemed to ripple through the city like a shadowy specter. But where was the real Sheila Carter? And what secrets lay hidden beneath her beguiling facade? It began on a sultry summer evening, the air thick with anticipation and the scent of scandal. Sheila had always been a woman of mystery, her past shrouded in whispers and speculation. Some said she was a femme fatale, a seductress with a taste for danger. Others whispered of a troubled past, of secrets buried deep within the recesses of her soul. But regardless of the rumors that swirled around her,